Thank you very much. Senator Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair, Ranking Member, and uh, thank you very much, Under Secretary, for joining us today. Um, I want to talk a little bit about research into food. Um, so the USDA research into food for human, humans centers on safety, but also on strategies for increasing productivity and sustainability and quality, and that's really important. And the USDA has also started to advance some educational programs and resources promoting indigenous food sovereignty, which I think is very important, and I appreciate your attention to that issue as well. One area of research that is very important, but I think it's less attention, is um, NIFA's support for research and education to help Americans make um, informed food choices. Um, on NIFA's website, there are a variety of initiatives, including programs to help folks make good choices about food, resources to help individuals living with diabetes make um, good nutritional choices, those kinds of strategies. And so these initiatives go directly to the relationship between food and health and touch on how improved nutrition is one of the most powerful Absolutely. tools we have to improve health outcomes, especially for chronic health conditions that are so harmful to people and also cost the United States billions of dollars in healthcare costs. So could you talk about what more we need to do in the Farm Bill to support USDA's research and education into healthy food and that connection between food and health? Senator Smith, this is one of my passionate um, priorities as Undersecretary. I'm very, very committed to this topic. Um, on yesterday, Secretary Vilsack and I both announced the ASCEND, which is the Agricultural Scientific Center of Excellence for Nutrition and Diet, in support of President Biden's Cancer Moonshot 2.0. In response to the White House Congress on Hunger, Conference on Hunger and the strategies that we're working to meet, we recognize that in the United States, almost what 60% of us deal with one chronic condition, mm -hmm. at least one chronic condition. Mm -hmm. If I, I could probably raise my hand three or four times when we ask those questions. And we know that there are a lot of things outside of our control, especially when we deal with cancer, but food isn't one of them. And so we have the power to bring together the right people at the right time to talk about what needs to happen in order to translate the, once again, the research and the data into usable information for Americans to improve the quality of life and reduce their risk of chronic disease and cancer. And so we have initiatives called Precision Nutrition. Each one of us in this room belong to a subpopulation. And we don't, one size does not fit all of us. And so we want to be more targeted in the guidance we provide to Americans on how to eat for a healthy, high quality life. I shared, and Secretary Vilsack shared on yesterday, that many of our family members have died before age 60, mine mm -hmm. before in, the, in 50, between 50 and 55. My sister just last year at age 50. We can do better. The pandemic elucidated for us how vulnerable we are when we carry these obesity-related uh, chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, kidney disease, cardiovascular disease. Um, so yeah. So. My answer is yes. <laughs> we're, we're all over it. We currently invest about $100 million, $180 million in nutrition. And how do we bring that power to, to, with the American Heart Association, the cancer associations, with our producers? You know, and so how can we use our convenient power to bring people together to solve some of these problems? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate I can hear the, um, the strength of your uh, passion for this, and I believe that this is such an important area for us, an area where there's a lot more work to do, and it is, um, as my good friend um, Senator Booker says, this is a civil rights issue, yeah. um, and it is also an issue of how you save billions of dollars in health care costs as while you are also simultaneously improving, um, improving people's lives. I think this is a big opportunity for us as we think about um, re resource allocation and prioritizing in the Farm Bill. Um, I just have a m minute left, and I want to ask you a similar question about the role that the USDA can play in research, understanding the impacts of um, market consolidation and concentration. Another area that I think affects the, um, the, the lives of farmers and ranchers and also consumers as we see increased consolidation, this committee has talked a lot about that. Do you see this as an area where we would benefit from additional research? 
Uh, absolutely. The, the, currently, the Economic Research Service is right in the middle of all of these conversations about the impact of consolidation on, on American agriculture. And, and so it is the impetus behind a number of our initiatives that are, are trying to build local and regional approaches to many of the, the, the challenges that we face, because we recognize how vulnerable we are when we don't have a resilient food system. And so the consolidation is um, it, it's an issue. And we are working towards making sure that we, for example, increase meat and poultry processing at local and regional levels, being able to help those producers have economic opportunities and have a little bit more control over their, over their vitality. And so, yes, absolutely. Economic Research Service is right in the middle of those conversations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very 